Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wasn't freaking talking to you. I know you weren't talking to me. It's Monday. Good morning. That is, weren't talking to you either. <laughs> See what I mean? This is why I'm late. <sighs> Welcome to freaking Monday. Today's definitely a Monday. Hopefully, all of you are getting notifications if you followed Charles' new tutorial. Be nice. First comment. <laughs> Peggy hops on and says, be oh, nice. Oh, thank you, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> See, Peggy said it, so you have to listen to uh, I do, sort of. But she's not here to beat me up, so. I will beat you up in her face. Mm. Jim, good morning. Miss Peggy, good morning. Daniel, good morning. Uh, so, cool what? thing, come what? here. What? Cool thing. I honestly, I was going to tell you about this earlier, but I was so frustrated when I came in. I totally forgot about it. So yesterday, yesterday, yes, my days of the week are all sorts of screwed up. Um, you got your notification. Awesome. So yesterday, I uh, Marine Corps buddy of mine was in town. So my family went and met up with his family for. I feel weird talking to you, and you're not here. Um, my family went and met up with his family at uh, the shack for oh, yeah. brunch. You I didn't. I didn't because I was going for a bike ride after. Okay. So I didn't have a you can, freaking. Super are you allowed possibly. to drink and ride bikes? Well, sh I mean. I mean, oh. oh I have a story honestly, to tell you too. I don't know about, about bikes. in the civilian world, but in when I was in the Marine Corps, a guy that I worked with got a DUI for riding his <laughs> bike while intoxicated. I mean, That's you're no supposed shit. to follow the rules of the road. <laughs> Hence my story later. Yeah. But. That, I want to talk to you about that story. Not yes. here, right? Or no. do you want to talk about it here? No. I don't know. I could. I don't know. I'll Maybe we'll talk about it, and then another time we'll talk about it. Okay. Here. We'll do that. Anyway, so I go to meet my buddy and his family and um, run into one of my old students. Um, <laughs> I, that never happens. Yeah, it doesn't ever. <laughs> Uh, but he bought my breakfast, what? which was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. When the when the server brought our ticket over, she said your breakfast has been paid for. I was like, How's... at that time, did you know he was there? Or was yeah, it like a yeah, he works there. Oh, he okay, works there. nice. So um, that's super. Yeah, cool. she told me. I don't want to call him out on here because I don't want to. But anyway, um, that was super cool. So I don't know if he watches this thing in the morning or not, but that was extremely nice. I looked for him when we were leaving and I couldn't find him. And it was a weird thing because like my buddy was leaving too. So I wanted oh, yeah. to follow him out. Yeah. But I wanted to stick around to find this guy to tell him thank you. And well, you're I didn't get that him opportunity. Thank Hopefully so. he hears Thank it. you. It was, that's... it was very nice. Not needed. But if anybody ever wants to buy my breakfast, I'm always <laughs> open for that. <laughs> not a requirement, but hmm. I like breakfast. Well, that was cool. Um, and I like it at the shack, too. It was, it was quite tasty. So uh, We need to have Bloody Mary. Yes, we do. Because um, they have very good Bloody Marys there. Very good. That's what I've heard. Um, anyway, welcome to Monday. Uh, it has been a Monday so far today. And hopefully now that I remember that good story, my, my, my brain waves will change. And I will probably You not, know what it is. But... It's you got the mark of Scar. Scar's I, I got beat up this morning. Scar's at a jerk. <laughs> so, um, it's funny. I didn't even feel it happen. The guy about ripped my head off. The mat takes away everything. Apparently, at some point, I got sliced open too. But um, yeah. later today, I'll go to like wash my face or something. Like, ah, what the? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. And your neck will probably hurt. Later. Oh, my neck's gonna hurt for sure. <laughs> <laughs> when I come in here tomorrow, like this. <laughs> That's the sure. way I walked around for a I, while. I am going to, we're going to, I want to talk to the guys at the jujitsu gym, but I want to have some sort of, of like tried out event there for our people. So oh. I do a, a one hour or two hour, just yeah. a bunch of us go. Yeah, let's and go roll around. It, it'll probably be relatively inexpensive, I guess, 40, 50 bucks or something a piece. I don't know. I have not even broached the subject with them. Uh, very lightly, I have. But uh, it's something I want to do. I think that, that I got a, our people would have fun with that. I was talking about it in my women-only CCW class and my intermediate pistol class last week. And everybody's just scooping it Jason, up. Jason, good morning. like a, a fun idea to them, too. So, okay. just, the, just in general jiu-jitsu. So. I... Uh, 
I kind of floated the idea in my handgun two class on Friday of the the, the spicy and mild drills with Vinny, and yes. it was hugely successful in as far as a thought experiment. So hopefully we'll be able to. We'll talk more about that kind of stuff later. But uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys, we're making you famous. So, uh, you, you don't have to apologize. Um, well, well, there'll be more on that to come. We have also, Vinny and I went out of town this weekend and we, we had lots of good discussions on all sorts of cool stuff that we want to do. Some very big ideas of grandeur that will probably never come to fruition, but uh, like we had great talk on Friday night about just chaos. That sounds phenomenal. Yes. I had... Turning the facility that we were at into just a combat town and you go and live yes, there for a week and, that sounds and fabulous you, you everybody has some munitions and at some point somebody's going to break in your house you don't know if it's going to be today or three days from now or whatever and there's going to be organized groups and it oh man it would just be so much freaking fun well, but i got a lot of ladies like, interested in force on force training so we need to do something i need so, like 200 need million dollars okay that's yeah, it here you go. so anybody thank you um you're gonna write me a check no i was I mean, giving you my debit card oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I just work here for fun. <laughs> it is freaking windy outside. Yes. So anyway, I'm going to move on. Uh, we're going to take a look at stuff that's on the wall. I have no idea what we've got going on in here right now. But but you're going to go really fast, right? I did not say that, did I? No, not this time, but I said it for you. Because yeah. That's what you would typically say. No, only if I'm going to... You can. See, we've got some changes going on back here. Damn it, where's it at? Uh, there we go. There it is. I got some... Peggy's got 10 bucks for me. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. That'll almost get us there. Um, oh, seeing this. I don't know if I can get it fast enough. But coming up here in a couple weeks, we have a uh, AR Armors course coming up. Uh, we sold several seats in it this weekend, so we've only got probably, I didn't get a chance to look, but I'm going to guess maybe two seats uh, left in that class. It is a post-certified class, so if you're a copper, you know a copper that either wants to be an armor for the department or just wants the hours. It'd be a good class for that. Um, if you just want to have a better understanding of the AR platform and how it works and uh, what causes it not to work, it's a good class for that. So two-day class. Uh, you can spend a full two days with Vinny and John, uh, which is worth the price of admission in and of itself. So a uh, couple spots left in it. Hop in them. All right, shotguns. We've got uh, several 12-gauge pump action and semi-auto shotguns up here. A couple of bull pups from Smith and Keltec, and I've got one Mossberg 590 shockwave. On the long gun wall. Will you find out from Dan if there's anything goofy, or Charles, if there's anything goofy going on this week for sales on that, please? Thank okay, you. Only the goofy sales. Only the goofy sales. Uh, on the long gun wall. We've got lots of holes up here, so they must have been pretty busy this weekend. I was. I was not here. I was out, uh, like I said, out of town. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, still lots of options up here. Mr. Miller, good morning, sir. Uh, in most in 556, but I've got, <coughs> excuse me, I've got 308 and 762 by 39 variants up here. A couple of scars. I've got a scar 17 and a scar 20. Uh, I've got a SIG in 308 and a CMMG in 308, Springfield M1A with that old school. Uh, semi-auto rifle, a couple of bull pups, IWI Tavor and Springfield Hellion, and then several AR pistols in 9 mil 762 by 39, uh, 556. I've got both Banshees and Descents, so lots of cool stuff up there. Oh man, we got some more shadow systems in. Finally, Jackpot. been waiting for these guys to come in. Any CRs? We got CR. No peas. No peas though. There was a CR in there the other day. Yeah, there is still a CR in here, but so for shadow systems, I've got some DR, MR, MR920L, which is my favorite. Um, I'll tell you what. Oh, I wonder if they came in yet. Something I just ordered is Shadow Systems just came out with a new comp that will fit on their threaded barrels. Um, and I just ordered one for me. 
Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm just going to have to... We're, we're, yeah. We got, I think we've got a handful of them coming in that we're going to put out on the floor. Okay. Um, it'll... Was it well priced? It's a uh, hundred bucks, I think. Okay. So, yeah. So it'll fit on, to the best of my knowledge, any of the threaded full-size guns. So that, well, the MRs or DRs or XRs, if they're threaded, you can put it on there. And it's cut to fit their, their slide cuts. So, should be pretty cool. Uh, I do have one CR920 Elite in here. No, not, no CRPs yet, uh, but that's going to be a pretty awesome thing once it shows up. Are they officially out yet? I don't know that they're officially out. I don't know that. I don't think that they are. Springfield, I've got some Hellcats, XDSs, uh, XDMs, XDM Elites, and a couple of Prodigies. Smith, I've got the Equalizer, EZ9, EZ380, uh, 2.0 Shields, Performance Center Shields, uh, some full-size 2.0s, and some SD9s, and CSX. So lots of different variations in there in the Smith case. SIG, we've got 226s and 229s, 365, 365 Xs, uh, P320 Spectre Comps, M17s and 18s, lots of options from SIG. HK, I've got a couple of VP9s, one Ruger 5.7, CZ P10 and a Steyr M9, and then several Beretta variants, uh, 92 FS, FS um, and 92X Performance. F and X 45s, I've got a, 45, a couple of 45 tacks, 509, uh, T, C's, and mids, C, C, and L, S, edge, and then several canics, T, P, 9s, and Mateys, different variants. Lock case, nice to finally see this filling up again. Uh, for 9 mils, I've got 17s, 43X, 48, 34, 19, and 19X. Then I've also got 42... Uh, oh, we've got the new 47 with a dot on it. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. I do like the dot mount. That's, that's, that's a product of Holosun, though, not clock coming up with anything new and crazy. Um, but if having the newest, latest, greatest is your thing, then there's a 47. So innovative. Right, I know. <laughs> uh, that's essentially the gun you have already. Except yes. yours is done up better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, Jim, no rivals. Sorry. Um, Walther, I've got PPQs. I've got a Q4 steel frame and a Q5 polymer frame. CCP and PPKs. Bursa, Thunders, and BP9s. Taurus PT92 and Super Shiny. Um, so they should call it. PT ninety two SS super shiny <laughs> <laughs> and uh, PDP that will you please pull that tag off and tell me it's not an F series it's a full size gun it's not an F series gun please that bothers me yes sir we'll do so Rx Delta L X and M SAR Sky Savage Ruger Mossberg and Taurus now with Taurus. Are these still on sale, Liz? Uh, I, I was looking for an expiration date. I don't see one. Okay, so we'll, we're going to say as of right now, these are still, if, any, if you buy a Taurus uh, TX22 G3C or GX4, you get a gift card, $25 gift card. So if you've been looking for one, that's just extra incentive to come pick one up. And we've got several. So I don't know. I think that's going to the end of the month. But if it was supposed to end over the weekend, well, you just come in and say, well, Phil told me I get it today. And I don't know if that'll get you anything, but maybe. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's look at 22s real quick. So we just added a couple of new 22s into uh, our rotation in the training department. We added a FN 502 and a SIG P322. So we wanted something that we could put a dot on. So we got one of each, uh, and we'll kind of see how they how they hold up. 
Well, we've got a couple uh, revolvers in here. Uh, Ruger, SP-101s, GP-100s, Colt, King Cobra, Pythons. Say that again, Liz. Okay, yeah, so the tourist gift card thing is until the end of the month. Uh, any of the Taurus TX-22 compacts? Uh, that does not look like a compact to me. It doesn't say compact, but I'm not as familiar enough with the uh, Tauruses to know, but I'm pretty sure those both look like full-size guns to me, so... I'm going to say no, not right now. All right, um, in the use case, I've got several SIGs, 320, 365, M&P9C from Smith, Sky, CPX, Taurus, 605, another Smith, uh, Shield, TSOS, M&P40, uh, Springfield Hellcat RDP, so it's got a dot and a comp on it. HK45C, MMP 2.0, a couple of them. Uh, actually, another one. <laughs> We've got lots of MMP 2.0s in there. LCP2, G3C, and a Ruger 5.7. Miss Karen, good morning, ma'am. Uh-oh, I hit the button too many times. There we go. All right, let's go back over to the perch. <laughs> Questions for me about anything you saw in there. King Heavy, good morning. Um, <laughs> it's making me nervous. Funny to see my, whenever you're up here and I just see my. <laughs> <laughs> She's easily amused. <clears throat> amused, yeah, yes. She is. Three-year-old, he's even worse. Jim, backpack panels. We do have backpack panels in one. stock. Okay. So let me know how many we have and how much they are. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Okay, we have lots of them. Different sizes. Um, I think well, I shouldn't say anything, but... Mm. So we've got lots of backpack panels. So depending on the size, that, that price will vary depending on um, what you want. Hi, Nick. Hey. Oh, look, 25% off. Okay, I, I was going to say, I thought they were on sale, but I, I wasn't 100% certain. So, yeah, 25% off, backpack panels, uh, lots of different sizes. So, come in, check them out. Save some money. 9 mil, defeated, 45 ACP. Defeated. 100% high quality. Good job. <laughs> Being a commercial. We saw, we got a package, I don't remember what it was, but it said 100% high quality on it, and we got a good one about that for a long time. Nick and I, what was it? Sucker. On a solder sucker. On a solder sucker. <laughs> it was a high quality sucker. 100% high quality. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, this week, what do we have going on this week? We have a lot of stuff going on Focus this week. Focus Fundamentals has two spots left. But, okay, which one Re is it? Uh, handgun recoil management. Recoil management for handguns. So, you I told you we need a spot to sit to where we could just okay figure it out. How are we going to do that? Okay, let's go. Let's go. We're gonna it. we're gonna try, and yeah. we're gonna watch me be right here. <laughs> I can sit on. <laughs> All right, have a seat. <clears throat> okay. Now put it over there. But then you, we. I think the magazines would have helped. Except that they're wobbly and they're not set up right. <clears throat> Works. I don't I like it. Well, we need like a we, table or yeah, something. This needs to be wider. You, we have to like be sitting right next to each other to make this happen. We're how there, you, we can stack. How did you guys do it with your, when, during the that pandemic? That was different. That was, we were able to have a real camera. So it was the way the video is supposed to be, which is horizontal. <laughs> Facebook limits us to doing it vertical. So it's dumb. <laughs> Poor Nick. He's like, why why am I here? But no, we've had nope. this. <laughs> it doesn't work. And then we can't see comments. Yeah, I know. 
So they don't like it. Nobody likes it. All right. My way's better. All right. Here we go. I knew I was right. I'm just saying. Everybody can say it now. The, the comment, it would be kind of nice if the comments kind of exploded with Phil's right. That doesn't work. I mean, don't I would. Don't do it. That would be okay don't with me. Don't do it. That would be okay with me. Um, Maybe it'll so, make his Monday better, though, which then would make my Monday better. Cause... Maybe. Because then I'm just going to bug you about it all day. Remember when everybody told me I was right? Hey, remember that? Remember when everybody told me I was right? Well, it's better than, you know, slamming doors. <sighs> I haven't got to do that yet. I know. <laughs> um, it's on the horizon. This, this week. So, Focus Fundamentals, what day is that on? Wednesday. Phil was right. Look when? at that. <laughs> Sweet. When? Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I love you guys. Wednesday. Wednesday, what time? Failed. <laughs> four o'clock. Four o'clock ish. Um, I'll double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's four o'clock. So recoil management for handguns, focus fundamentals, two spots left in that. Correct. If you're unfamiliar with, with what those are, fo the focus fundamentals classes are a little short one hour course where we pick a skill to work on. In this case, it's recoil management. So that'll be with Mr. Vincent. Um, if you can, if you can, and it's, it's really kind of a weird way to say it because you don't Hmm. Now I don't know. What are do you? Do you, do you really? Do you really manage the recoil? Hell yes. Or do you? Do you just learn to understand the recoil better? I think that your grip is managing the recoil. I mean, I think it's a big understanding that your grip. I think we're. I think I'm. I'm. We're not controlling recoil. Yes. We're I'm managing. Overthinking it because if you if you just hold a gun, you know, loosely in your hand, you let the gun go bang it. It does what it does. Yeah. The amount of recoil that the gun has is the same all the time, no matter what. The way that you manage it, not necessarily control it, the way you manage it is based on your grip, how well yeah. you're you're holding onto the gun. And my issue is I tried to control the recoil too much. Which is what just, most people do. And yeah. controlling Pinky. Look at Karen go. That's right. Yeah. Nice. Um the uh not pinky's out like you're fancy. That's not what we're doing. Pinky pressure. Add that pinky. Right again. Again. <laughs> Look at this. Andy's on a roll. Um, so and now I lost my I lost my train of thought mm -hmm. because see his everybody's head's getting telling bigger. Me, telling me I'm right, so uh, mm -hmm. I don't have to say anything now. I'm just right. Good job. <laughs> I would have yes. been pretty bad if I spit coffee all over the back of you. Uh, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, anyway. Come out for that. Couple spots left. Four o'clock. And <laughs> sound wired or weird. <laughs> either way. Yeah. It's either true. way. It's, yeah. We know where Vinny got his spelling from. <laughs> yeah, I got to shoot with Vinny yesterday, and I had to use your gear. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, whose gear did you use? It was funny because I put on your. <laughs> it was funny. I came in yesterday to not work because I don't. I don't do that ever on my days off. <laughs> yes. Never um, shows. I up. came up to help to help Nick. Um, install TVs, and then I got distracted by our little light class, so I wanted to take it. I only had my gun with me. Yeah. So she says, Nick, I'm coming up to help you. Oh, wait, I'm abandoning you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he's used to me abandoning him to go shoot stuff. Um, anyway, so I went downstairs, and oh, well, I didn't have any of my gear, so I borrowed Phil's, because he wasn't here to shoot the little light class. And I was uh, meeting a friend. <laughs> For Bloody Marys. I didn't oh, dang have Bloody it. Marys. I know I want one. Well, anyway. Anyway, put on all his gear, went downstairs, played around on the range for a little bit. And then I came back upstairs and then realized that my belt has been under my desk the entire time <laughs> I've owned it. So why I didn't use my own gear is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But. Did you have a, well, I guess you could have just put my holster on. No, you I didn't. didn't I was need, wearing leggings. I didn't. No, I mean, I, I mean for flashlight on the gun, but you, you don't even really need oh, to have yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did put your flashlight on. I Maybe that's what it was. I put your flashlight, but we didn't even use it, so. Yeah. Um, David, yes, uh, right size grip definitely helps. It's not the end-all, be-all, but it is harder to manage the recoil of a gun when the grip doesn't fit you well, whether it's too big or too small. So, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people think that if I get a smaller grip, I can wrap more of my hand around it and I can control it better, and that's not true. Uh, the grip does have to fit you right. But even if the grip fits you right, but you're gripping it incorrectly. And if your pinkies aren't on the grip, uh, just like 
Uh, just like Karen said a minute ago, your pinkies are a huge part of your grip. Yeah, I, I had a, a student in uh, my Handgun 2 class on Friday that he was asking me that question, and it was somewhat, it was really a red dot, uh, red dot question, but it, it had, it, it was really because of his grip. So we addressed his grip, and when I grabbed a hold of his hand, his pinky was like super loose yeah. on it. And just making that one little thing, one little difference, one little change, made a huge difference in, in his ability to track his dots. That's something else that's coming sometime soon. Vinny and I spent a lot of time talking about that this weekend. The red well. light class? Red light course? Red, red light? Red light course? Red yes. dot course? <laughs> yes. Red dot. Uh, uh, red dot class, so we're gonna, we're. I'm trying to think of what I was Lots. thinking of when I said that. You're trying to think of what you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that all the this time. This is going sideways. This is why I overthink everything. This is sideways quickly. Yes. Um, Storm my life. <laughs> so, anyway, we have lots of stuff coming. Lots of new classes coming. It's a, it's a process to get this stuff to happen, but um, lots of exciting things. We were getting very, uh, Vinny and I were getting very worked up about some of this stuff this weekend. It was I awesome. I can only imagine. So, this weekend, Vinny and I got to do a really cool thing. I'm going to try to talk about this super fast and then get you guys... We're going to go away, and you guys will just go away. Um, we got to go down to Trout Lodge, uh, YMCA Trout Lodge, this weekend. There was a women's retreat down there, um, and we got to help out with their firearms courses down there for a but they had 250 women show up at this. We thought, Holy crap. We thought it was going to be like 20 or 30 people, right, is what we thought. Um, I'm so sad they, I didn't get to go. They do all sorts of stuff. They do anything from pottery stuff to to uh you know archery and firearms and rock climbing and and uh i say land nav that's not right uh just hikes they went on on different nature hikes they had a they have a, a civil war uh, cemetery on site so they do a cemetery tour and they have, i mean just a, a ton of different things these ladies got to do we got to help out with their rifle uh, rimfire 22 course and shotgun course um, and it was so much fun. We had so many people show up to that that were super nervous, uh, really were signing up for it because they thought this gave them an opportunity to not have to come to a place like us and be worried about being belittled or, or, or asking the wrong questions or whatever, which I hate. We talked a lot about that, that, that the stigma that's associated with the gun ranges and gun culture, and that comes from a from a reason, right? Because that's the way it used to be, and it is still in, in some cases, not here. The really cool thing was that a lot of the ladies that we dealt with, which wasn't all 250, I mean, we maybe, uh, in classes, maybe 20 or 30 uh, ladies, and then uh, some interaction at lunch. We stood out a little bit. When we went to the lodge for lunch and stuff, it was, like, when we went to check in, it was kind of funny. We went to check in, and like, the whole place was like, whoosh, <laughs> like, what are they doing yeah, like, here? What are Where's you? your wigs? We're your the skirts? only guys there that weren't wearing YMCA stuff. Um, so we stood out quite a bit, but had lots of great interaction. It was so freaking cool. Uh, what was the retreat called? I, I don't know. It was Trout Lodge, the YMCA Trout Lodge down in Potosi. I think it was just called a Will, Woman's Wellness Weekend, I think. Uh, they do it once a year. It was cool. It was really cool. So, um, well, I'm, I'm sad I didn't get to go. I had an awesome yeah. class. So. I, I, several, after several interactions with some of these ladies, you know, because <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's different when uh, uh, an apprehensive female shooter deals with me versus deals with her. There's a, there's a difference. Like there's a, there's a, an immediate perceptive difference between what they think is going to happen when they interact with me than what they think is going to happen when they interact with her. Um, I mean, my interaction really is better, but, um, their, their See, initial, I started laughing before yes, you even finished your sentence. Their initial thought of how it's going to go, um, it, it makes them more comfortable, right? So I really wanted Liz to be able to go down this weekend, but she was already teaching a women's only CCW class and, it was awesome. You're the only chick here, so but yeah, so I, I shared some, so, uh, uh, we swapped some texts back and forth, like, hey, this lady said this, this lady was in, girls just want to have guns, remembers you and loves you and yada yada, and she had mentioned that that I really wish I could have come, but your class was class was awesome. awesome. It was my favorite so far. It was like 
I love that class, the women's CCW class. It's just different conversation, and everybody feels more comfortable to open up. And I will tell you what, over 50% of that class had a story to tell about a, an issue, a, and bad issues. It's, it's incredible. It's incredibly bad that people have those issues. And but it's incredibly awesome that, that they feel comfortable enough and safe enough to share those stories, not only just to you, but to yeah. other people. Because that, that in and of itself is a, <clears throat> is a, is a relief for, for most people, right? Just being able to say that this happened to me. And if I was teaching that class and it was a, it was a co-ed class, that story probably wouldn't come out. No. I, do, I do a lot of times get those stories one-on-one, -on -one, right? So I, I tell people in my classes a lot that... You know, any time, you, whether it's after class today, on a break, it's three weeks from now, six months from now, if you just want to get something off your chest and, and I'm a person you can talk to, do it. Um, and that happens, which is it's awesome and terrible, the amount of, amount of bad things that we hear that people go through. So Yeah, it is. But it's really cool that in a class setting like that, that undoubtedly you get more people more comfortable to share those stories. Yeah, it's they really cool. realize they're not alone, which is, again, a good and bad thing. Yeah. Bittersweet. Yes. So you took Vinny. Yes. I couldn't take Liz, so I took Vinny. It's, 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 a, <laughs> it's a compromise. We did we did joke that Vinny's name that weekend, or over the weekend, was going to be Venetia. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally calling him Venetia. Venetia, yes. <laughs> Dude, I got to... <clears throat> We gotta come I, back to I, David's. I got question. some stories too. I, I, I don't. Uh, I look forward to hearing them. I can't. I can't. This, I can't tell them here. But <laughs> Venetia. It was. It was pretty funny. Karen, I agree with that. Being therapist is chairs. Yeah. I one hundred percent. We yeah. get. Um, and that's that's awesome because it's a it's a defensive situation, uh, and a lot of times, and psychologists and psychiatrists and all that don't necessarily have. That's not their wheelhouse. So. When it's something very specific that's traumatic, then it, it definitely helps to talk to somebody who's specifically in that world. So I'm happy to help. It's awesome. It's awesome. So what does David say? Add sighting with dominant in both eyes as it relates to those with non-dominant sighting issues, just a suggestion. So that is a very common thing to have. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about cross dominance and shooting with both eyes open and just all the things that come with your eyes and focusing on sights, not being dominant, and, and having any sort of handicap um, with the eyes. And that's a very common thing, and we address it in all kinds of our classes. Yeah, and I think that I think he's talking about adding it as a as a focus fundamental. Oh, I thing. see. Like shooting with I, both eyes open? Yeah, I, I think, think that's I what... I do have one of those. I think that's what it would be, is a, is a both eyes open thing, simply because when it comes to shooting a handgun, if... All right, let me back up for a second. So if you're unfamiliar with eye dominance is, everybody, everybody that has two eyes has one of them that is dominant, that your brain prefers to use. So most of the time, if you're right-handed, it's your right eye. If you're left-handed, it's your left eye. But you can have cross-eye dominance. That doesn't mean your eyes are crossed. That just means that your brain, as a right-handed person, your brain prefers to take most of its information from the left eye. Um, when it comes to a handgun, it's really pretty simple. Um, because I, when I push a gun out in front of me, I push it out directly in front of my right eye. But if I was left eye dominant, I just simply push it out in front of my left eye. Uh, what we tend to see a lot though is people turn their head to try to get their left eye behind it. And that's not necessarily what you wanna do, in my opinion. You'd, you'd much rather, this gun's already moving in space. If you're trying to move your head and get everything to line up and time up perfectly, you're slowing yourself down, you're inefficient. Um, if you can keep as much of this still and just move your hands and get it out in front of you, that's definitely the better way to go. Make the gun work for you. Yeah, they're um, red dot. Red dot eye also. Red dot eye. I don't so know what that means. I, th I think he's just talking about eye dominance and using the red dot as just in general, the red dot changes all of that entirely. And one thing that we, or at least I learned in that uh, red dot class we took back in November, and this was a big deal for me because I don't have stereoscopic vision, it means that I don't use both of my eyes to look at one thing. I have a lazy eye, so this, they both have their own. It's difficult to explain, yeah. but in the red in dot class, time, yeah, yes. it's in a short amount of time. In the red dot class, he had us tape up our red dot so we would look at the target 
Yeah, it was super it was awesome. So cool. And we would look at the target with our non-dominant eye, and then we could see the dot with our dominant eye. And this is not this is an older yeah. technique. Like red dots on rice, rifles have been long time ago. Long yeah. time ago. Um, but it was new for me because of that that vision issue, um, and I learned a lot from that. And the ability to do that has helped me be able to transition faster and be able to track my dot better um, and and learn and understand the red dot a little bit better. So if you have a dot on your gun, um, I don't know, like unload, triple check, quadruple check, you're safe and empty, put a piece of tape on your dot <laughs> on the front side of it so you can still see the dot, and then just practice pointing it at stuff and try to understand that your non-dominant eye is gonna look at the target and your dominant eye is gonna see the dot and then the pictures come together and you can kind of transpose the dot over what you're looking at. When we first it started is, doing this, and we tried to do this before before class, <clears throat> you know, like not not like the day of yeah, early, yeah, yeah. but way before, and she couldn't do it, she couldn't, couldn't do, do it, it, she couldn't do it, couldn't do it. And, and it was it was really pretty cool in the class, all of a sudden it was like ding, and she was- No, uh no, I didn't get it in the class. He sh Okay, so he showed us the technique in class, uh -huh. um, but I was never able to do it. Oh, it was, it was But our, then when you had me the, like yeah. practice a bunch of times with, we went into the classroom with the cert pistol, the, the one that sh shines a laser, um, and Phil was just having me go back and forth, like covering eyes and doing all this weird stuff, and basically, <laughs> I don't even remember it's, how it came yeah, to it be, just, but it was like, I, actually, I see sudden, it. Yeah, like, all of a sudden she was like, <laughs> wait, there I, it is. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you how, how much of a game changer that was to me. I, I've never seen anything like that before, so it was, it was huge for me. I don't know that you would have the same um, life-changing thing, because I, I can look at anything now and I can do that, and it's, it's incredible. So. Again, very specific to me and my lazy eye, um, but once you can truly understand how to look through the red dot and use it the way it was intended to be used, where you only have one focal plane instead of three with, with iron sights, and it's a game changer, and that's, that is a huge part of being efficient with it. I want one more real quick brag story, and we're gonna <clears> go away. This was, again, in Defensive Two on Friday. One of the students in there, she was shanking the, the gun like crazy just every time she pulled a trigger just just really heavily anticipating a recoil and um, on one of our breaks she came up to me and said hey I just put my dot on my gun uh, just this week and I just kind of sort of think I have it in the right spot can you double check it I said sure once we get back from break I'll shoot it and see so her dot was she was hitting at five yards about four inches high so she was really shazamming because she was aiming at the center and still hitting like six or seven inches low. Sorry. And um, when when she saw me take the first three shots and all the shots hit, you know, four or five inches high, she was like, uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> so it we, we fixed it and we got her got her dot on. <laughs> um, and then we got her shooting again. And I just did a short little drill with her just with trigger prep and I just kept asking her to prep it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more and she started, she hit the bullseye. And at the first time the gun went bang, she apologized. She was like, oh, sorry, I didn't realize it. But like, no, that's- <laughs> Surprised her. That's, that's supposed yeah. to happen, yeah. right? Let's try it again. And she started smoking the bullseye. And after that, I never had to say another word to her. She was able to think through it and it just freaking worked. And it was so cool to see her go from shooting way low yeah. left to just smoke in the, that, the, the, the target. That moment when shooting becomes, it's discouraging when the bullet doesn't go where you look, where you see, wanted it to. It seems so simple, right? It's like yeah. you have this tool in your hand, you think it's like this, this laser beam thing that you, you aim it where you want it to go and you pull the trigger, it's automatically gonna hit there. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't, it gets really frustrating really fast. Yeah, yeah. And then when you have those moments where it, all the fundamentals line up and you remember everything on that checklist and you sink it in the bullseye like that moment of just yes yeah that's my favorite because <laughs> that's when people start enjoying it you know and i really like to see people enjoying shooting because you know the stigma behind guns in general yeah. especially for new shooters is is pretty crappy so when they shoot and then they enjoy it it's the best awesome uh we'll take the next red dot class if ever offered, we're it's coming, and it's we also coming. have a red dot um, 
focus fundamentals. Yeah, we do have a focus fundamentals on the the red dot uh, coming yeah. up. And Karen, so we're gonna we're not exactly sure how we're gonna do the the red dot stuff yet. If we're gonna make it one class or two classes, and and where it's gonna fit and all that kind of thing, but there is a a difference between just understanding the dot um, and uh, what a dot is and um, how to adjust it, where you should zero it and all that sort of stuff and shooting it. And so we kind of, do we want to have that one all encompassing class or do we just want to have one that talks about those basic foundational things? Like maybe we don't even shoot or maybe we shoot just a little bit. Um, but then we also have another one where we're, we're focusing more on the advanced fundamentals of it and, and dot tracking and calling your shots and all the hugely advantageous stuff, really trying to open up your vision and, and focus on the target, not that stupid dot, which I still struggle with, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a hard, hard habit to break, um, but it's when you got to break. So makes sense to split. I think so too, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it, how it goes. We got... Again, this is all stuff. That Vinny, I mean, we've been talking about these for a little while, but Vinny and I started throwing a bunch of ideas back and forth this weekend. It was, it was cool. So that's all I got. Anything else from you? We went way over. Why? It was way over what? I don't know. Way over nine o'clock. I try to not bore people too long, and well, they're still here. They're not that bored. Okay, well, it's all kinds of stuff to do on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> In Facebook world, yes, they like listening, so they're still here. It is freaking windy outside. It is. Holy crap. Um, two classes. So that's two walk. votes for two classes. Um, all right. This week, mostly focus a regular week. Yes. Uh, focus fundamentals on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, we have girls just want to have guns. So we will be one closing. One spot left. Oh, one spot left? One spot left. Uh, we will be closing early. Um, six o'clock. Close at six o'clock. So normal hours, Monday through Friday, 10 to 8, uh, Saturday, 9 to 6, Sunday, 10 to 6. This Wednesday, uh, which is also Lady Shoe Free Day, uh, we'll close at six o'clock. So if you need anything from us on Wednesday, please get out here before six. Unless you're in the class, then you get to hang out longer and shoot guns and listen to Liz talk. Yeah. Um, shoot guns. Yay. Drink wine and eat cupcakes and stuff. Yay. Her talk. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I know. You're going to come in there and scare everybody away. That's what really makes people nervous. Want to go away. What? <laughs> anyway, um, you guys have a super awesome day. Thanks, Karen. You have a great day as well. You guys have a super awesome day. Stay safe. Be nice to one another. And we'll catch you soon. Later. You got to hit the button. Awkward, Awkward pause. Pause. <laughs>